What's up everybody on today's menu? Firehouse chicken, farro, roasted Brussels sprouts. How are you, Jean Vier Saint Ange Miller? Uh, I'm a little hungover. Little hungover, yeah. okay. That may come into play in other episodes. We'll stand by. <laughs> um, uh, Jean Vier Saint Ange, how good is Firehouse chicken? It's really, really good. Yeah? What yeah. do you like about yeah. it? Uh, the crispiness mm -hmm. of the skin. Yeah. And then it's got a little kick. It's got a lot of kick to it. Yeah. The big part of the kick, of course, is the fact that it marinates at least overnight. Now I say at least overnight because you can go up to three days. However, you could also just do it like an hour and a half, which I did that one time. Which the first worked. time you ever had it, which worked fine. But yeah. wait till you see how potent it is now. It's gonna <laughs> punch you in the face with food and flavor. So let's time travel back to yesterday when I started the marinade. So we're gonna make the marinade here in my Ninja blender. I don't know why I said Ninja like they paid for the show. They actually didn't. I should have blocked this out and made them pay for it. Doesn't matter. Uh, the point of telling you about the blender is that when I started doing this recipe a few years ago, I did not under any circumstance use a blender. Didn't have one, didn't use it. Just chopped it all by hand, put it into a bag, and it worked out just as well. So first off, we need to start four cloves of garlic. Got it here. Let's be able to get in there and get through all this stuff. I always overuse garlic, by the way. If you, you'll notice as you go through. I need four cloves, I'm gonna chop them up, but I'm gonna go for the big bad ones, and then I'm probably gonna go more like six. Just cause garlic's awesome. Isn't that right, Nick Scarpino? Yeah, boy. Thank you, boy. I'm not good at smashing them. I'm good at, there we go. So we got these guys, right? I got my big six over here. Got all this junk too. Uh, you know what, I'll do seven, cause I have seven broken up. I should give credit where credit's due. This is an old Bon Appetit recipe. Found it. My mom had an issue when I went home once. Uh, of Bon Appetit for some reason. And uh, I'm sure Jen would kill me if she was here, hearing me say bone appetite or whatever. It's probably because you, you put a lot of emphasis on the bone. I'm boning, the, the man. Beat. I'm boning. You know what like I mean? It's, uh, like you're talking about boning another human being. Sure. Yeah. That's chopped pretty well. You don't have to get nuts. Again, it's going in a blender, but I think you do this to express it. But like I said, you don't need the blender. Don't feel like this is something you have to have. I, I didn't have it for a long, long time. Now I do because Jen demanded it as soon as she moved here. I might even bought it before she moved here but then she only uses it for smoothies and stuff. And then I discovered, of course, a lot of my old recipes called for this and I should have been using them the whole time. So I screwed that up. Uh, next we need to put in two cups distilled white vinegar. This is a brand new one. I have one over there that's limping along, but I didn't feel like doing like, oh, this, this one's half done. You know what I mean, Nick? Nobody wants that. They want to jump right in there. I'm all set here. Yeah. New measuring cups too. I bought a lot of cool shit for this show, mainly because I got expensive to kind of fun. Don't tell Nick. So wait, you had a perfectly good vinegar and you're like, nah, I don't wanna use that one. I'm gonna buy a brand new one. I, well, I was talking with the measuring cups, but yeah, it's not perfectly good. There, you know, I, don't, I don't think there was a, I think maybe I had one cup in there. I was gonna need more to come, you know what I mean? Okay. Don't worry, this just means we have to pay Andy less. It's not a big deal. We pay Andy? Don't we? Half cup of olive oil in there. There you go. Now, a big one here, a fourth cup, kosher salt. So that's in there now too. Uh, what is it next? Oh, yeah, my favorite. Two tablespoons of chopped fresh parsley. Now, parsley, same thing as uh, ye old garlic, where I just use a lot of it. Two tablespoons, I could sit here. In my olden days, when I was a young buck trying this recipe for the first time, sure. I would sit there, pack it into the tablespoons, be like, is this right? Is that what it should be, blah, blah, blah. Now, you know what I do, Nick? I just say, you know what? I love parsley, and I like the colors it makes. I like how colorful it makes the marinade. I just, there's a handful of it, two handfuls even. That's enough for me. All of it in there. Is it two tablespoons? Is it 15 tablespoons? The world will never know, but I know that I like it and I don't care, that's what I'm gonna do. That's how, that's how I roll, that's how you should roll. Uh, what's next here on the list here from Bon Appetit? Uh, now we're gonna put in two tablespoons of paprika. Now paprika, I will measure out. I wanna know exactly if I'm putting enough in there. Look, brand new thing, like I said. Oh, kind of funny, he's picking up the bill. <laughs> Why me everything? <laughs> you know what I mean? It better uh, not be like a new dog rag around here somewhere. <laughs> well, if we use it in the show though, it's a write-off. Oh, don't tell anybody we put two more. And there you go. So two tablespoons of the paprika in there. What else are we missing here now? They want us to do one tablespoon of the pepper. Mm-hmm. And then a half cup of veggie oil. Are you asking yourself, is that a giant brand new thing of veggie oil too, Nick? Did you just buy new everything? <laughs> what are we, made of money here? <laughs> I got taxes I gotta pay, Jesus Christ. Trust me, when you eat this chicken, it'll be worth the bankruptcy. Got it in there, half cup, yeah. Done. And that's it for that guy. 
So now the fun part. We're gonna blend it up, Nick. Turn it on. I use the pulse option, the pulse option, Nick. Look at that, look at that beautiful color, Nick. You know what I mean? Yeah. You can see the flavors in there. That's what I love so much about it. So then you take your big old reusable bag, top all this in there, two breasts, bone in, skin on, two thighs, bone in, skin on. Again, bone appetite, you know what I'm saying? See what I was doing with the bone again. All right. And yeah, we're gonna take this marinade and just pour it on in there. Look at that. Oh my God, the flavors, Nick. It sounds squishy. Mm, it does. So yeah, that's the firehouse chicken in the bag, in the marinade. I'm gonna put it in there overnight. Again, you could do it a long time ago. I'll flip it a few times as I do stuff throughout the day today. Uh, again, I've done it with as little as like an hour and a half notice. It, it, it gets it, but the longer you keep it in there, the more tasty it's gonna be. Marinate it overnight, then the idea is to bring it out about an hour before it goes on into this guy to go on there. You wanna bring it to room temperature. We're gonna put it out, we're gonna put it on the plate, we're gonna pat it dry. Then we're gonna move over to making Brussels sprouts. It, just like everything else in this Bon Appetit recipe, like you can just do whatever you want. Don't, don't listen to them, you know what I mean? I'll be damned if I'm gonna listen to the French as if they have a better idea about how to do things than me. You know what I mean, jean I was like, oh. Approximate cooking though is my favorite kind of cooking. Right, because that's all you, because cooking, as I say all the time on this show, it's it's not as hard as people want it to be. No. You know what I mean? It's not as hard as making it. Why do, why do you love cooking, jean Vivre saint Because it's great and it's very cathartic for me. Mm. It makes me forget about all my life problems. Yeah? And then... Well, you don't have any now that you moved here and married <laughs> me, right? Yeah. Got <laughs> <Cut> the cameras. <laughs> so yeah, they're out there now, you're just gonna go in there. I don't wanna pat too hard. I don't wanna take away too much. What's this remind you of? Bungos? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm cheating here just like you can. Cooking's not as hard as it is. We have just, green, we bought uh, Brussels sprouts. Yeah. We were in a hurry. We just bought <laughs> the green giant ones that were already washed and already cut. So what we're gonna do, you cut, you clean them. Wait, yeah, you clean them, you de-stem them, peel off any yellow leaves and then cut them in half. So we've done that, right? Just toss them in this bag then if they get cut in half. There you go. Right, perfect, thank you. You're thank welcome. You. Now they want three tablespoons of olive oil in there. I don't think you have to be like that precise. Approximate cooking is Approximate the best cooking. cooking. Hey, that seems like good coating right now. So now these will go in for a total of about 45 minutes. You want them nice and dark, or crispy as you want them, I guess. Uh, a little caramelized. Exactly. Every 10 minutes or so, you should shake them, mm. flip them a little bit, get them going, and we'll, I'm sure, forget about it and do it here and there. Mm -hmm. We're gonna put that in there. Uh, jean vivre saint Oui. You're gonna make farro for us. I mean, it's it's like rice, but better. Um, so yeah, this is pretty much, to me, has replaced rice, because I think it's way tastier. Agreed. And, and I love rice. Has a lot more nutritional value than rice. So, Super easy if you just follow the instructions on the package. So, yeah, they ask for five quarts for one cup of farro. Uh -huh. It's just a shitload of water. That's what it is. Gotcha. Okay. It's like how long does? It, here's the thing. You you make it. You you joke. She jokes about how easy farro is. I literally have never cooked it. That's why I wanted her on this episode in particular. Not because she's my farro bitch. Whoa! Just because I need to know how I don't know how to cook farro. So a shitload of water, and then you just bring it to a boil, and then how long's the farro gotta be in it? Twenty minutes. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right. So do you want to talk to people about what you discovered on how to do this? Because here's the thing: I've been making firehouse chicken so much longer than I've known Jean Vivre Saint Paul. And the problem with it is that you want the crispy skin on the outside. Yeah. You want it to be nice and dark. Nobody and wants a sad chicken thigh. Nobody wants a sad chicken thigh. And so what I was doing is. You know, getting the pan nice and hot, and put the first time I ever did it, I put the oil in it, and then I put the chicken in it face down. And then I came back when it was supposed to be, and I pulled it out, and it, the chicken skin stuck and pulled off. I was like, fuck. So then every time I've done this, or even the ch chorizo chicken thigh dishes, another cooking with Biggie episode, I constantly moved them. Mm. Just sat there for the 15 minutes moving them around, and then you had a new plan that worked out really well. Yeah. So what is it? So it's soup. I guess it's very sciency and appropriate to the cast iron pen, but it's essentially starting with a room temperature pen and putting your oil in there. About depends on the portions you're making, but just like coating the bottom of the pen, um, and then you literally put the chicken skin down on it in the cold pen. So I'm gonna dump it in here just to coat it. All right. Yeah. Nick, can you see? This is us coating it. That's enough. Really? Yeah. Remember, I put in way more last time. How, it depends on what you're making. that's what the making. recipe called. How much are you making? I'm making some kick-ass two thighs and two uh, I'm sorry, two thighs and two breasts. That's enough. Sure. Yeah. Okay. 
Please. Well, real quick about your water, though. It needs to be boiling before I put the... <laughs> it's cooking. You can't go wrong. I'm just, I'm just saying. <laughs> All right. I'm just saying. You I want to do what you're going to do. I want a nice... I don't, I don't approximate want to cooking. Up. Approximate cooking. So we're going to put it in there. We don't want them to touch. No. That's the big thing. Show them the skin side. Like, this one has shitty skin. The shitty skin? Yeah, it's like all pushed back. What are you talking about? That's... Oh, you're right. No, okay. Wait, isn't the skin up the front still? No? Doesn't look like it. Do you want me to try to fix it? A little bit. Fix it. Fix it. Because otherwise you're not going to get anything crispy. No, it's unfixable. Pull on it. Pull on it. Pull on it. Pull on it. Can you, can you jerk it a little bit? <laughs> can you just maybe... Like, you do this hand motion to it, maybe? Pull on the skin. This? Like I'm loosening up the skin like that? <laughs> Maybe you're All right, that's your. That's gonna be as good as just good getting as some, more, some more blood flow to the skin, maybe. <laughs> skin down, everybody. Yeah, skin side down for this part. So yeah, it's it's it may, it may seem strange to start them off on a cold pan, but it works really nice, and I don't know why. I can't explain it. Well, I think it's just because they warm together then, right? And there's like. There's a bond of brotherhood mm -hmm. that they all went through this. The oil in the pan and the chicken oh. went through this together. And That's the other together. thing. Wait, you also mentioned that yours, you were moving them around a bunch. Yeah. Like these, you do not touch for the entire duration of the recipe. You just let them go. For the 15, 20 minutes they're on. Yeah. And I mean, then, you have to touch them to flip them. Before yeah, we but at the out. end, yeah. Just saying, just saying. Just want to make sure we're clear, everybody. Right. right now out there, Trevor Starkey's taking frantic notes. And I don't want to <laughs> mislead him or something. I don't touch them ever. So jean vive saint Oui. Oh, they're crisping up good over here. Yeah. I like the I like the color I'm getting there. I like the color. There. I'm always terrified I'm gonna go to flip them and they're gonna stick because I've had so many problems before. You should be fine. Yeah. Well, yeah. I hope so. Now your water's boiling. The timer on these is about to expire, uh, and then when that happens, we're gonna flip them. Yeah. You're gonna put your farro in there. I'm gonna put them in here for 20 minutes, 25 minutes. Yeah. And then I'm gonna mess with them uh, Brussels sprouts as well. Yeah. Just to give you an update on where Sounds we're at. Sounds great. It's the moment we've been waiting for. Nick, do you have an okay ca camera shot of this? So I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna poke it. Ah, oh, yeah, okay. See, I'm already getting under that. That's always good. There you go. Oh, good lord. There you go. Nick, look at that. Come on now, Nick. Nick's not Mike, but he's right now saying, oh my God, Greg, you're the best cook ever. I can't believe how good and crispy <laughs> that looks. Hoo wee! Don't get excited too fast. <laughs> hey man, I got one. Again, all I needed for the Instagram is the one. Do it for the gram, Nick. So now I'm putting Big Bertha in, the, in, in here. Remember, cast iron is incredibly hot. Don't this burn is a heavy yourself. ass pan. You need Fran. You need Mr. Stay Puff. <laughs> or Fran, Mr. Stay Puff are on a mission to not let my hands get burned. Ah! Just kidding. Oh dear God, why? Now, Jean Vie of Saint Ange Miller. Yeah. I'm gonna defer to you. How? What? Because you you plate better than me. Yeah. Period. End of story. How? What is the order of operations for plating right now? So I like to portion everything uh -huh. in like kind of equal. Sure. Um, sizes. I love you. Uh -huh. Your meat portions are huge. Goddamn right they are. <laughs> Nick, put it on the box. That's a quote right there. Greg Miller's meat portions are huge. Okay, so that should be enough. Okay. Now you want chicken? Because like thyroid is pretty filling. Yeah. I was gonna hold it. Right? So you get the protein and just drop it on top. You get whatever last minute decoration idea you had. You just uh, you put it. Ooh. Oh, oh. Ooh. Just one, I'm just giving to one. Okay. Look how crisp. This is heavy. Oh, I'm sorry. Shame right here. <laughs> I got distracted by your nipples. Happens every this time. This is so crispy, I love it. We nailed it. Ooh, you nailed Firehouse it. Chicken Sun, Bone Appetite Magazine. What up? They're so great. You good then? Yeah. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen Firehouse Chicken, roasted Brussels sprouts, some farro. Jean Vieve Saint Thange Miller, thank you so much for helping me with this one. Thank you for and, having me. Oh, it's a pleasure. Thanks for joining me do in your own kitchen. Do you come here often? I do. Often I come here. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, let us know what you think of it. Let us know other recipes we should do. And of course, follow me on Instagram, hashtag Cooking with Greggy. See what I'm up to. And until next time, no. It's been my pleasure to serve you. I guess our pleasure to serve you this time. I guess. Yeah. <laughs>